Born from the real world needs of Resolve Marine, the Resolve Maritime Academy offers unmatched training for maritime or marine firefighting, safety, and resource management. Our courses are taught by active professionals, providing hands-on experience that goes beyond industry standards. Whether you need STCW, USCG, or MCA certification, Resolve Academy will prepare you to mitigate emergencies, saving property and lives. Training as real as it gets with real-world scenarios and live-action simulations. Push your limits, bring out your inner hero, and become an indispensable member of your team. Resolve Maritime Academy, where real-world training meets real-life expertise. Hi, and welcome to Yachting Canada, presented by Yachting International Radio. I'm your host, Adam Langley with Superyacht East Coast, and my lovely co-host, Amanda Langley, also with Superyacht East Coast. And we're here to continue bringing the stories of all the reasons why you should make Canada your next yachting destination. And today we are thrilled to have with us our special guest, Dennis Campbell, who knows so much about Canada and Atlantic Canada and our part of the world that he was been obsessed with it for years. He founded his own company, a tour company that called Ambassadors. And uh, he has been a fixture of the tourism industry in our region. I would say a leader of uh, many opportunities across our province in our region. Someone we have a great deal of uh, time for. We love meeting with Dennis and, and sharing our experiences. And I just have to give a little bit of a poke here today because uh -oh. we're in this amazing location here on the Halifax waterfront. You can see it in the background you know, here. We set up uh, in front of the window here to give you a bit of a sense of this incredible uh, location. And in fact, we're in my old office. Dennis, you stole my office. <laughs> I, think we'll, I think we'll get into that a little bit more as we talk about a bit of our collective history. Uh, but first, just to give you a bit of a finer point on, on Dennis's work, uh, Ambassadors is a large land and, uh, and water sightseeing company, works across Nova Scotia and Atlantic Canada, the largest in, in the region, and does incredible tours uh, presenting the culture and the living history and the experiences of our, our region. And Dennis, no one else better than yourself to talk about your company a little bit more. Why don't you give us a bit more background on, on Ambassadors and uh, you're not wearing your kilt today, maybe you can. No, I should have. I should have. I'll run out and put it on later. <laughs> no, but we're all very coordinated. We all wore yes. navy, and in, we didn't talk about it. It was no. in the dress. Yeah, there was a dress code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Listen, thanks. Uh, thrilled to be here. Uh, always enjoy hanging with you guys. But uh, this is really a cool experience to be able to talk about what we all know and love. Uh, and you know, I like to say, if you love what you do, you, you never work another day in your life, right? I wish that felt true someday. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are the, those days, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so no, Ambassadors this is a company that uh, I started back in high school. Um, well, I started it, it was more ignorance than anything, but my sis, my uh, youngest of three sisters, who's 10 years older than me, uh, one day when I was seven years old, she was 17, she got a call from her boss on her day off saying, it's an emergency, you got to take, uh, you got to go do this bus tour from the Western Nova Scotia Hotel, to which she said, I'm babysitting my little brother, to which her <laughs> boss said, well, take him with you, put him at the back of the bus and tell him to sit there and be quiet, be good. And you were seven. Seven. Yeah. Dennis, can you, you can't sit and be quiet. No, no. But I was, able to, I was able to go to the back of the bus anyway. But no, you're right. I couldn't be quiet. <laughs> Actually, at the end of the day, uh, not kidding. My sister said, OK, you know, come on up and say goodbye to everyone. And so she gave me the microphone and I just said goodbye. Well, then everyone was coming off the bus and started handing her gratuities. And it was that third little old lady that handed her a dollar and then handed me a dollar. And at seven years old, you get handed a dollar. Well, it's I just, impressionable. It's it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So I just looked at the dollar. And of course, with the dollar in my hand, all of a sudden, another dollar and another dollar and more change. And I needed two hands. And I was couldn't figure out why were they doing oh this. And the you became was, addicted to it. That is <laughs> yeah. the legend it was born. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, but it was at that very moment that I were, learned one of life's most important lessons. I learned at seven years old that little old ladies have a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> That's but true. It really, it really uh, communicates that the value of the experience that was being delivered through that that tour, and I think that speaks to. And you can you can build on this the authenticity of our. That's what I was saying. Piece. Having a child on board is that's real life. That's right. authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they, the people all uh, very very friendly people uh, seem to really 
and joy was a great, great for everyone. And uh, anyway, it just so that's where it started. So, so when did Ambassadors actually start? So Ambassadors was uh, almost 10 years later. I was actually technically 16. Uh, and I started it as a company called Halifax City Guide Service. Okay. Uh, just a step on tour guides to go on the visiting motor coaches from all over North America uh, to take people to around the city and Peggy's Cove and Lunenburg and so on. But I found that uh, that name was a little limiting. So I decided to change the name and I knew I wanted an A name because you're talking to the A team here. So we (laughs) understand. Yeah, you guys are. (laughs) You absolutely are. But I really believe like, you know, especially you're starting out, uh, having an A name gives you a step up. There you go. It does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Because I would ask people, you know, how to, (laughs) yeah, phone books. Yeah, exactly. But I would say to people, you know, how, how do you find us? They said, well, we went down through the list and the others, you know, and, and I said, so I'm, we're, H, Halifax City Guide Service. They said, yeah, we called these other ones and left messages, haven't heard back. I'm like, I got to get myself an A-name. Interesting. So when you started on this journey with Ambassador, telling the story of Halifax, the landscape of our city, which is the capital city of Nova Scotia, now has a population around a half a million people, a very different landscape uh, today, uh, in case in point, the Halifax waterfront, which we'll get into a little bit more detail, but it's evolved dramatically over the last decade. So with that, the experiences, the expectations of visitors, number of visitors, uh, even moving into more elevated, uh, visitors and that comes to the super yacht sector is increasingly visiting the city of Halifax, uh, and the province of Nova Scotia. So just talk to us a little bit about that journey. I mean, you've, you've been through it through the business and through your personal interests in the waterfront. Uh, tell us a bit about what that looked like. Yeah, I know. Happy to, you know, when I think back as a kid, you wouldn't walk away out by waterfront, you know, it was scary and it was very dilapidated and so on. Uh, and then you think of, uh, you know, over the years of the transformation is spectacular. Uh, I like to say to people that, you know, uh, cruise ships and, and super yachts, the yachts built this waterfront. I mean, really, truly. But in fact, the truth is, you and your team. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a big team and it was private and public sector. And that gets the little jab I was giving Dennis earlier. Um, in my former career working with Waterfront Developments, which is the uh, Crown Corporation of the province of Nova Scotia, We're operated out of this office for over a decade with an incredible team. And working, Dennis was a tenant, uh, one of our larger uh, tenants, and uh, demonstrated the importance of our partnerships and collaboration and working together to build the experience of a destination. And uh, so collectively, it is all of our opportunity and responsibility to work together to, yeah. that, to that end. Uh, so looking out this window today in 2024, it's incredibly hard to imagine that this scene could have looked quite differently. It could have been a four lane freeway mm. that was imagined to be constructed in the 1970s to feed the commercial container pier yeah. at the south end of our of our city. So much like Boston, which spent the decade mm. undoing mm. the wrongs of yeah. infrastructure. Yeah. And if those folks on, on listening to the, uh, the podcast are familiar with Toronto and the, the Gardner Expressway, which separates the downtown from the waterfront, that type of infrastructure, you know, back in the day mm. uh, is you know, the root cause of a lot of challenges in, in developing mm. the city. So luckily, a group of uh, very forward thinking People stood up and said, no, we can't have the mm-hmm. waterfront opportunity um, diminished by a freeway. So that was set aside, not before they developed a significant, massive piece of inter- mm-hmm. infrastructure called the, the Cogswell Interchange, which they're now taking down. Right. And uh, that is a re- well, almost there's a rebirth of almost a 10-building uh, neighborhood that mm-hmm. you know, a large section of the city is being reconnected. So if we look out you know, the window here today and... Uh, if we were to walk the waterfront, what was in the 70s, as Dennis mentioned, a series of dilapidated and uh, undesirable mm-hmm. uh, falling apart uh, wharves. Remin, you know, harkening back to the when all the goods in the province were largely moved by ship. Mm-hmm. Once that transportation moved to road, these assets were no longer needed. It's all disrepair. Long story short, thankfully, now through thoughtful, uh, Partnerships, both in the public and private sector, the waterfront has been preserved and, and developed, and we're you know we're we're experiencing uh, a major renaissance of the city I think, mm-hmm. through the waterfront. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we really are. And you know, you think about this waterfront. I'd I'd put it up against any waterfront in Canada or even North America. It's really one of the top waterfronts. And when visitors come here, they walk this waterfront. 
it's a wow. It's a total wow, you know, shops, boutiques, pubs, well, taverns, restaurants. Because walking the waterfront, the boardwalk spans the whole, almost the whole entire, you know, downtown core. Yeah. And so you're, you're really immersed in it. Yeah. And you're, you know, everything that you would want is within walking distance. Right. And it's so diverse. There's something for everyone. It's, it's and, you know, the festivals and events and so on. But to, uh, to watch the transformation over the years was just spectacular. And then to see, you know, the the government public money was sort of what the got, got it going, but then it was you know the private investment followed as proved by this two hundred million dollar right plus right here. Yeah, and, and you live there, so <laughs> yeah, you live on the waterfront. You work and play down here. Yeah, yeah, and I was so happy that I didn't have to pay two hundred million dollars here. <laughs> 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 but I, I think he really nailed it on the head that the waterfront has is inclusive. It has something for everyone. Uh, we work in a in a uh, industry that often gets um, stereotyped as not accessible. And now, mind you, not everyone can afford you know multi million dollar boats, but that's uh, doesn't mean that boating is not accessible. So we think of everything from stand up paddle boards to super yachts and everything in between. Whatever gets you on the water uh, is about is what we're about promoting. Uh, there is a significant opportunity for places like Nova Scotia to attract high yield visitors mm-hmm. uh, and these visitors have you know smaller footprints when it comes to spaces they occupy but their spending ashore is exponentially more than some of their other visitors to an area so i think having a mix of and it actually attracts you know people to the to the yeah, waterfront so, mm-hmm. you know they help a, a working waterfront even though this is not a what you would say just a traditional working waterfront mm-hmm. and not, not commercial fishery and, and mm. containers and whatnot, but it's still working in the tourism mm. space. Oh, yeah. And it's working in the building of a neighborhood mm. space. And Very I think cool. that's what uh, over the last decade has really uh, changed the feel and the environment of the waterfront with people living, people visiting, people playing all in this space and people working mm. in, this, in this space. But it is still has a lost its authenticity. So yeah. there's still... You know, you can talk a little bit about the wharves that people tie up to here. I mean, we're we're not talking about some of the the wharves that super yachts traditionally like dock. Well, this at. is amazing. So we're this building that we're in right now is on the end of a three hundred foot wharf mm-hmm. uh, called the Cable Wharf, and it was it's over hundred years old, and rightly so. Cable Wharf was named for the cable ships that operated from here, laying the transatlantic cable, mm-hmm. um, and now it's been. Famous for other uh, incidents as well, and it's connected with the Titanic, the, the Mackie Bennett, and the Vinia. The cable ships brought, unfortunately, uh, the victims through here, uh, the closest port to the Titanic disaster to to deal with the aftermath. Um, but it's my time. My time at the Maritime Museum. I confess, I worked for several years at the Maritime Museum next door, which is another treasure of this waterfront. But I think, uh, to Amanda's point, it's the we are on. It's, some respects on some ancient infrastructure that's yeah. been reinvested uh, in, and you would be familiar with that. You operate from the site with your tours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And also, I think I've heard that the, the, the Cable Wharf is actually really one of the most historically significant wharfs in the country when you think of connecting to Europe, the communications, the Titanic, and so on. So, uh, certainly a spectacular wharf for sure. Well, yeah. it's, you're safe here because it's very well constructed. <laughs> yeah. Had to facilitate those massive. Uh, cable schools that were brought through here. Um, talk to us a bit about your work, Dennis, uh, and how it uh, aligns with uh, our collective efforts to build marine tourism and awareness of Atlantic Canada as a destination for recreational boating, uh, for, for, for large yachts, for, for luxury crews. Uh, and w- if within that, you know, as we try to look to attract investment in infrastructure, we're also building for local people first, mm-hmm. and they local people become the attraction that you know, attracts the visitor. But just give us a sense of where you see marine tours going. You're, you have a great history of having helped build the cruise industry, and you work in this in this uh, space. Uh, but how can we how can we attract more support and to grow the uh, the opportunity here to uh, to grow marine tours? It's a bit of a loaded question. Really? It's like five questions. In one. <laughs> yeah, it's really about yeah. <laughs> Ten, uh, you, can, you can take part of the question, uh, which I prefer you feel comfortable answering. But um, I think really the crux of it is. Almost every visitor that comes to Nova Scotia is a marine tourist because they're yeah. coming for the coastal experience. Yeah. But there seems to be a bit of a disconnect between marine tourism and land-based tourism. Uh, 
Uh, and so how do we create better recognition of brain towards to get the support to grow it? Hmm, great question. So, you know, I like to say that our number one asset in this city is without a doubt our harbor. I mean, Absolutely. no one would ever dispute that. Uh, I think uh, number one asset for Nova Scotia is is our ocean. And we are Canada's ocean playground, I've seen on our license plates. <laughs> and we're never more than, what, 35 miles from the ocean. Uh, but but uh, from our point of view, our job is to create that authentic experience. And, you know, I say to all of our staff, of which we have a little over 300, uh, working throughout Atlantic Canada, uh, I say to them every year, I say it at the beginning, I say it. Several times when I see people, our staff, and I always say at the end of the season, and I'll, I'll never stop saying this. And that is that we are so fortunate to have the, the, the privilege to create vacation dreams. Yeah. And I say, when I say that, you know, it's funny to say, I know it's might to some sound corny. No, but it I is. <laughs> That's where I'm tapping. Yes, no. <laughs> but, but, but really, I say, you know, think about how, how incredibly fortunate we are to live in this part of the world, this, which has just so, so much beauty. And we get the honor of, you know, creating the vacation dreams. And I say, you know, there's people that, that are coming here that this is their first time. They may have saved for 10 years to come here. They may have saved their whole lives or, or, you know, they didn't have to save. They'll say, you know, my grandmother or my grandfather told me about the beauty of Nova Scotia, the Bay of Fundy, or Peggy's Go, or Anna Green Gables of EI, or what have you. You hear these things all the time, and they're, they're like, this is a life dream for me, to come here and to experience this. And so I'm like, to our team, I'm like, folks, you got to get it right. You got to be on. You, like, you can't have a bad day. Right. If you're having a bad day, leave it at home. Yeah. Uh, and I said, you know, you, you, you as a tour guide, can one tour can absolutely make their entire vacation if you give of yourself. And so I would say, critical, critical that you come out of the gates really yeah. strong and you just start that tour off on a high and you let the people set the expectation, let them know you are going to give them the best tour you possibly can and then give it. You, the, the rest of the day is easy when you do that yeah. as compared to starting low and trying to you know, gotcha. work your way up. It takes the whole day to do it. Yeah. So you start strong and make that experience a wow and like it just works it's magic it's funny you say that because it's not lost on us too that we get to shape some of the marine visitors who come right. here and yeah. their trip and their itinerary and how what a privilege that is it is so we get to show them you know within what their interest is, interests are yeah. this amazing place yeah oh yeah yeah and for us like we do the gamut of the really, really the biggest of ships, yeah. uh, right down to the very, very small, uh, high end, uh, luxury lines. And of course, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to yachts, that's where we send them over to you guys because you guys do that so well. But, yeah. but, but, custom- but, yeah. but, but and, we do yeah. customized experiences. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely. And it, it really works, but it's so cool to see again that whole market blossoming. And it's like, oh, where is this going to go? Like, it's certainly going in the right direction. Yeah. So I think that really speaks to the requirement for collaboration. Yeah. That's uh, sometimes that's difficult in our, in our our little part of the world where sometimes people kind of keep things to themselves. And I, I heard an interview you had done recently where I think you were asked something along the lines of, uh, "Do you work with other companies?" And you're like, "Of course we do. We do a good job. We want to work with you more." But if they don't, right. Yeah, and that's what we say. Like, it's funny. <laughs> lots of uh, new entrepreneurs start businesses along the waterfront, and they all you know come to us, not sure if we're a friend or foe. And we're very clear about that. We're like, listen, if you're a good operator, call us anytime. We're happy to help. If you don't raise the bar, you don't you know help grow the industry, make it better. Don't call us, you know, because yeah. we've had, we've dealt with bad competitors in the past. We don't have time for that. But you, you know, people, you know, they're when they hear that, they really appreciate it because it's like, okay, so the doors open and yeah, we create the bigger pie together. Right. So it really is a rising tide that lifts it is. all boats. It is. Uh, and I think we run into that with us too with, with our business is we don't, you yeah. know, there's a certain level of um, expectation that our customers oh, demand. Sure. Yeah. And so you don't, you know, you want everybody to be elevating what they're doing. Well, at a certain standard. At the yeah. same time, 
you cannot accommodate all their needs on your own. No. You need to build a team or whether it's a formal team within your company or a team within your network yeah. or a team within the industry. Uh, building marine tourism and uh, for focused on the building the luxury market and the super yacht sector, that is absolutely critical that we have in place partners and, and stakeholders that understand the opportunity and see themselves in it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the stage uh, we find ourselves having proven through, you know, the number one most visited destination in probably Atlantic Canada, the Halifax waterfront, mm -hmm. is becoming uh, a number one Atlantic Canadian destination for, for yachts. Mm -hmm. And as they come through this uh, experience, if they're made aware of the next one, and the next one makes them aware of the next one, then you are in fact building this marine destination network. And then we just need den a dentist in every port. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. I mean, how, I don't know if you know this number off the top of your head, but how many visitors do you have through all of your, your tours on an annual basis? Yeah. Think? So we right now carry just under 300,000 pastors. Wow. Uh, but again, the crew, cruise ship would be the biggest part of that. Right. Uh, but we also have our various vessels on the Halifax waterfront and amphibious vessels. So we've got six of those. We've got three 200 passenger vessels. And it sounds, you know, companies uh, come to us and they think, oh, you guys just do the, the mass production. And like, you know, we, we have a team in our cruise shorts that do nothing but the super high end. They start, as I say, they stop with the yachts because we don't know it like you guys do. And so it did again with that collaboration of help sending business yeah. back and forth. Yeah. But there's, we've spoke before about what we don't like is when we bring a visitor to a port and they end up not knowing what to do, or right. there's no ground transportation to get there, yeah. or you take, you have to take them out of, the port. We want right. them to enjoy the place yeah. that they're in. Yeah. And so and there's, explore, explore and then explore there. from yeah. there. Um, and so there's all sorts of opportunities here for, you know, private tours. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this in the past. Mm -hmm. George's Island is mm -hmm. one of them. Yeah. McNabb's Island. And they're all just right here in the harbor. Absolutely. And then not even to get into all of the stuff that's on land. that's you know, close here, like the Titanic grave sites and right. the Citadel. Um, Alexander Graham. Uh, Alexander, I was going to say Alexander Great Bell. We just spent so much time to keep breath. <laughs> right. But um, Alexander Keith. Yeah. I mean, all these things can be incorporated into a private you know, tour. hundred percent. Yeah. And, you know, uh, we do many uh, sort of high end hub and spoke out of Halifax because, as you know, the Soviets will come for and stay for several weeks. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's not uncommon to uh, take people down to Piggy's Cove, which is you know, uh, one of our iconic products, but to do a, a really high end experience, Peggy's Cove. We just did one recently where we had a small group of eight that we took out on a fishing boat and had John Campbell, no relation, but good friends. <laughs> and, but John, who owns the, the restaurant out of Peggy's Cove, who, you know, uh, gave them, uh, the interpretive of the behind the scenes of what way life is at Peggy's Cove. Oh, well, we're out there hand lining for fish and the mackerel were biting like crazy and we uh, we had a little induction ceremony where we inducted them into the age-old order of the southwestern they down and end uh, an ounce of rum and had the fish on ring uh, southwestern hats on and uh then we went back in and, and he took us uh, to lighthouse and uh, actually showed us something really cool that I can't actually see on camera because we weren't allowed to go there. But anyway, <laughs> let's forget that. <laughs> but for those who are listening who don't know what Peggy's Cove is, if you've seen a picture of a lighthouse from Nova Scotia, chances are, or Canada, it's chances Peggy's are it's Peggy's Cove. It's yeah. iconic. Yeah. Um, it's on, you know, rock, really uh, rugged coastline. But the actual village is so charming. Oh, it too, is. Like, it, it is. Yeah. 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 No, and, and afterwards we went, we went into the restaurant for a, a fresh lobster dinner and we had live entertainment uh, for the group right at the table. It's very, very it authentic fun. maritime. So yeah. you, you just nail it. That is what we deliver as luxury. Yeah, yes. That's it. That's yeah. it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't get more authentic than a couple, you know, passionate local people, that are not on a sort of a you know, record speed. Yeah, line. right. I've said it a thousand times. Yeah. It just and those are the people that we seek out or, or even find us often. I had an email yesterday from a, from a, a, a itinerary planner in Newfoundland who is uh, looking to understand what we're doing and thinks it's very exciting. I just can imagine what she could bring oh, on the table. So yeah. it's that network of people. Yeah. 
uh, that is as important as the network of infrastructure. And what, what would you say if, because uh, there are still a lot of stereotypes and misperceptions about uh, Nova Scotia, Atlanta, Canada's destination, some of them are rooted in that we don't have the infrastructure to support uh, visiting yachts or, or we don't have enough itinerary or we're too far away from you know, England and Maine, which is, you know, you, know, you could almost throw hit a rock right. you know, in the Um So how would you respond to the, that's perhaps the uh, attitude that we're not market ready. You know, that's interesting. I, I would, you know, really kind of disagree uh, with the comment only because, uh, you know, all you have to do is talk to anyone who's been here, experienced it, and they're like, this place is really special. Um, and, you know, uh, although, like, we only really operate 23 ports in Atlantic Canada. Oh. Well, I say only, I I say only, only because you guys would, you guys would be every little, little tiny study board. And some of those 23 are very small, but, but, you know, um, again, I've not come across a single, uh, guest who's not, uh, you know, who's gone away who didn't say uh, it was a wow experience. It was wonderful, worth it. So, you know, I think. The end of the infrastructure is growing and it's, it's, but the, is there enough? Well, it's always a chicken or egg and, yeah. you know, there needs to be more for sure. But uh, it's also neat to see like some of these super yachts that they'll, they'll pull into Lunenburg and they'll get the, some significant work done in one of the yards in Nova Scotia, which there's several that can do that kind of work. And then they'll fly up and meet their yacht and it's all ready to go. But they're paying Canadian dollars for the work to be done on the yachts. It makes so much sense. Just, I'm so glad you brought that up, Dennis. It's often something we bring up in the conversation that uh, some of our guests wouldn't have the uh, well, as intimate experience, experience with maintenance as you might. Because you, uh, you have this, this privilege of owning, owning a bunch of yeah. ships and per boats, which boats, you know, break out another thousand is the, you know, the acronym. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the boss pull up the bus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, here we go. <laughs> yeah. These are, this is would be some of the footy These are where Dennis's bosses. <laughs> yeah. So Dennis, you're you know very familiar with with ship repair and maintenance, and I'm again so happy you brought that up because we do have the marine trades and the uh, and this the uh, facilities, mm-hmm. and these are and there's many that are recently been uh, changed ownership and are yes. been investing and improving their their services and their platform to do maintenance. Uh, uh, so maybe just the, from your perspective of only a fleet of ships and having work done in Atlantic Canada on these vessels, you can you can kind of just for our audience, especially those captains out there know that we do have, you now managing expectations is absolutely critical. So can everything be facilitated? No, but what we can do, we do very, very well. True. And making sure that you know what that is, is critical. Yeah. I mean, as you folks well know, the, 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 the our marine history uh, uh, for sh- needing ships for fishing, we're, you know, has created these shipyards that today, we have such, uh, such a benefit to us as a sightseeing operator with, you know, uh, nine uh, va- commercial vessels uh, that we need to have, you know, uh, maintained and repaired and up out of the water. And, uh, you know, there's shipyard, you know, right out that way, not too far. And, and uh, uh, Sambro, that uh, is great, but, but it's not that far down to Lunenburg or up to Picto, and, mm. uh, down to Shelburne and over to Mateg and this uh, and up to Cape Breton. There's so many good options and uh, they're good yards. They do good work. And like you say, the new owners, uh, very excited about the, the new owners uh, in Lunenburg because uh, they have proven they know what they're doing. They're young, they're hardworking, they're aggressive, and uh, they're attracting these super yachts to be maintained, which is really cool. I might be helping with that. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, what an incredible environment for a shipyard to be located in a UNESCO World Heritage community, Lunenburg. Uh, so you're getting your work done while you feel like you're living in a postcard. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting uh, that some of the yachts that we've helped uh, come through Lunenburg for, for having work done, they weren't sure about being in a small rural community at first because they didn't think there was going to be enough to keep their crew happy. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, and happy crews are really important to maintain. Yeah. Uh, you would know you have a crew of 300. Yeah. Um, but they were just blown away by the, the access to nature, yeah. and the cuisine in the, yeah. in the town, uh, the proximity to Halifax, proximity to the airport. Uh, so all these things are really important and building a destination. Uh, but maybe let's just dial it back to Halifax. And uh, we have, again, just such a shared history of developing this waterfront. And you know, our, our kids have grown up on Halifax Harbor. Uh, for many, many years, the audience wouldn't know this, but the, the harbor uh, was, was polluted. 
We know we've had, uh, unfortunately, all the city's sewage was going That's into the harbor. Many harbors. And, and that is a challenge around uh, rural parts of Atlantic Canada. These things are progressively being cleaned up. But the incredible story of the Halifax Harbor cleanup, I think in the, in its absence, we wouldn't be here having this conversation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That. Right. Yeah. So um, Halifax as destination for your guests, whether they're coming by land or sea, for guests coming on cruise, for guests coming in yachts, there's a lot to do. We've talked about it, but what we haven't talked about, and I think what's really, really fun, and we've seen this over the years, is the amount of access to recreation and entertainment for crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Spe- usually, especially in Halifax. Well, yeah, I'm talking about Halifax. So more buyers per capita mm-hmm. than anywhere North world, America, or world, I think, I think no. it's more now. Yeah, I mean, there's some people who dispute it with uh, St. John's Newfoundland saying we're well, second. Another very that, fun, fun yeah, community. Yeah, yeah. Those are both great options. Yeah, though. yeah. Um, I think what's so great about, and we said this earlier um, in our conversation, but you're steps away from mm. everything. Totally. Bars, galleries, restaurants. I mean, amazing restaurants. Yeah. All um, ambassadors tours. Provisioning. Yeah. yeah. There's so much ex- to experience just within steps from where you'd be birthed. There really is. And, and you know, too, I mean, again, it might sound cliche, but it's very true. Uh, the Maritimers, Atlantic Canadians, people are lovely people. They can, they, it's, it's, a, it's all in our nature to be welcoming. And so, you know, you hear that all the time is I can't believe how nice you people are. <laughs> and, you know, again, you don't know how to be anything else. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 So no, it's good. And like you say, there's just so many choices, so many options. It's, uh, uh, you know, th- th- that's often the challenge. People come here and they're like, I didn't have time to do it all. Yeah. Um, yet we do hear from the big cruise lines, especially in saying, uh, that you, we as a company and we as a destination need to keep reinventing ourselves because believe it or not, uh, we've heard this from two of the major lines. We've heard it really from all of them, but two of them say, the number one repeat destination, cruise destination on the planet is Canada and New England. Uh, so that right out there. And, 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 uh, they tell us, they say, well, you know, you ask why that is. They say, well, the largest, the world's largest money population is the New York tri-state region and they can drive to a cruise ship so they can avoid a flight. And when they come here, it delivers. Canada is a foreign country for, for American friends and visitors. And it's, uh, you know, that foreign country with the different cultures and so on. We're, we're the same, but different yeah. and different enough that it delivers and they like it, but they're like, okay, they're going to only go to Piggy's Cove once, maybe twice. Right. Then they want to do something else. Well, there's so much more. There's Mulberry, Lunenburg, Oak Island. Gosh. I, I think that's where we come in is that, I mean, if you were to come here and you were just doing research on, you know, Google or YouTube, it would get overwhelming yeah. on what to do and, and, and the, how far it is away from, like, are, people get confused about distances. I know, you know, people come into Yarmouth and be like, okay, we'll be there in an hour. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the province is small, but. But it's still a it's, nine hour drive from one end to the other. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there's so much to do. Even people can, are amazed that we have wineries here. Right. Um, you know, you can go, go to the, some of the warmest beaches north of the Carolinas. Right. And it's fishing village right. and you can go to a city like this because there's so much to see yeah yeah I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that like you know the fact that like people like you have great beaches and they're actually warm water and we're like yeah like you know an hour from here warmest waters in north northern carol or uh, north of the carolinas yeah. which is incredible and then you just have to go and experience it uh, or we're an hour from here you know the bay of fundy the world's highest tides and all of that spectacular uh, but that delivers, you know, yeah. it's pretty cool. And wineries, we don't, you know, just have wineries. We have wineries that are truly world-class. Award-winning. Award-winning, yeah. world-class. And the, like my sister, who used to live very close to Napa Valley, you know, we were down in the Annapolis Valley, again, less than an hour from here, uh, recently. And we were sitting there at uh, Luckett's Vineyards. And she said, this is as nice or nicer than any vineyard setting in all of, uh, you know, they've California. done an amazing yeah. job with creating that experience. Yeah, yeah, it is spectacular. And yeah. they've done so by just inviting the local landscape into the presence of their, of their facility. Yeah, yeah. it's like you didn't have to. There's no smoke and mirrors. Yeah, here. this is just what we what we have. I remember yeah. when it when wineries first started. Really, people started paying attention. Um, 
and the first kind of great tour yeah. <laughs> went down and they would take like a white van and yeah. you know, eight to 10 people would go down and yeah. do it. There'd only be a couple wineries oh, yeah. and you do tastings now. Oh. I mean, the amount of people that go down there on tours and on their own. Oh yeah. Well, um, you do, you incorporate local products into your tours. You have the wine the waters tour. Oh yeah. You know, you've got craft beer tours. And so I think that's, you know, you should be commended for that because uh, some operators just go generic and I'm showing up on, without no due respect to Budweiser, but if I'm going on a, uh, on a, a tall ship in Halifax Harbor, I probably want to uh, craft beer. Craft beer, nice for sure. Water, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, no, thanks for saying that. I, I have to tell you, I can't take credit for it. Like we truly are blessed with spectacular people. And, you know, that's our greatest asset. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I've noticed that over the years, like from starting a company from scratch, so many years ago and watching the progression, the more quality people you get, the easier it is to attract quality people. It's yeah. like, you know, from good stuff comes good stuff and it gets better and better and better. And it's like, wow, it's just so nice to watch. Keep surrounding yourself with people smarter than you. That's, <laughs> that's, it. Too. that's it. That's it. That's it. Just, every day I get out and who's going to find this. I'll take that compliment. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a question. If, if we had a, a yacht, they're in the yacht, the other side of... Uh, yeah, there's a couple of yachts here. Yeah. You just can't see them. Um, if they walked into this, this boardroom right now and, and we were working with them and we said, Dennis, we have, we have the whole afternoon the whole and evening. Where should we go? What should we do? Okay. First thing I'd say... Money's no object and, and the, the, <laughs> okay. whole thing, the only I'm timing... I'm, I'm, I'm by. No, the, the, the timing is it has to be today. Okay. Well, first thing I do is say, let's crap open some beers. Yes. I mean, we give them a craft, the Nova Scotia craft beer cider. And we have those planted beers, planted beers. beers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then of course, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> and then you do, you know, obviously want to explore you know, what, what is their interest. Yeah. Um, but if you said, you know, money's no option, I would gravitate towards like some of the things we've done whereby we say, would you like to uh, be helicoptered to, uh, say, Island, for example? You know, which is, uh, you know, the graveyard of the Atlantic, but it is such a, a spectacular place. And you just don't know until you're there just how special it is. It's have you problem. been? You know what? I haven't. Uh, but I've talked to several people that have. It's like that is bucket list. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wild I, pony. Yeah. Like yeah. Definitely yeah. good one. Box to check. Dennis, number one. That's, yes. Yeah. That's a good one. We'll all go after <laughs> this. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. I actually was booked to go years ago. And. Unfortunately, I had to cancel. So we all get back to it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, you talk to anyone that ever does that and they were like, yeah, that was definitely a fucking insight. I mean, it's, you know, you got to do it, get experience in it. Um, another really great one. Again, I don't mean to just put everyone in helicopters here, but we have no budget. So, um, <laughs> you know, the, the, <laughs> yeah. So the other one is, of course, anytime we've taken in folks up to uh, Cabot Links, Cabot Cliffs, again, it's just a complete wow. Because, yeah. you know, right here in the province, we have, you know, two of the top uh, courses in Canada and, you know, uh, one of the top 10 in the world mm -hmm. in Cabot Lakes, Cabot Cliffs. So, you know, that's pretty special. And, yeah. and, and those are only two of many other great spectacular golf courses. So, yeah, uh, but true. you can helicopter up there, sure. and get a game of golf in and be back here if you want to. Or maybe you want to spend a night or two up there because... As you guys know, this, what's better than Cape Breton? It's magical. It's pretty magical, yep. Yeah, and you really shouldn't leave Cape Breton without going to a Cayley, right? You, you know, the entertainment and the wholesome experience of a Cayley is a must experience. It really yeah. is. Yeah, music is all over that island. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. Dennis, look, I think we could talk all day. <laughs> I, I know we could, uh, but it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. For having us here in your office, my <laughs> office, here today on the Halifax waterfront and uh, you know, sharing some of your experiences and stories with us here today. I just now I just want to get on the boat, go exploring or, or on one of your tours, this uh, is especially our, the elevated ones that are only accessible by helicopter. <laughs> this is our first interview that it's kind of um, featuring Halifax. Okay. And I don't think that there's a better person. To think of how many people you welcome here. Oh, yeah. thank you. For this to be our first interview for uh, well, Halifax. I am totally honored. <laughs> I really am. And it's been great fun. I, I always love having hanging with you guys anyway, but uh, sure. this, is, this is a neat experience. It's so fun to talk about the possibilities and get the word out there to people to come and, you know, see it and experience it for themselves and to be able to say, yeah, that was, they didn't, you know, I would say people would go away from being there saying they, even as much as they said, 
you can't get it until you experience it. Right. It's hard to put into words. Yeah. We find that a challenge yeah. too. It's a feeling. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I think you evoked this one of our interviews. I think I think it was when we were at the Palm Beach Boat Show last last uh, winter, and you said people come here and they feel like they've come home. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it, whenever you even say that, it still gives me kind of. They can be from shivers. anywhere in the world, but when they they feel like they're at home, there's yeah. an ease that comes from being here, and in these wow worthy. And um, landscapes, right. it right. can still feel very, you know, welcoming. And- yeah, yeah, and so that's really a big part of the reason why it's such a, a major repeat destination because people t- have a taste and they would like more. Yeah, and I know whether visitors are coming by land or by sea, if they're not armed with the information they need to really create, the, you know, maximize their time here, they're going to come thinking they're going to stay a couple days and then. And this has happened in many of the cases with the yachts we've worked with. They leave several weeks later mm. because we're continuing to enrich their itinerary. And not everybody has that luxury. So the more we can make people aware of what's here, the better they can plan and prepare. That's when you need to contact Dennis Campbell and ambassadors who look after your tour needs. Um, it's been a great pleasure having you here again today. Thank you to my co-host, Amanda. Thank you to Yachting International Radio. This is Yachting Canada, presented by Super Yacht East Coast. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.